What does your glasses prescription really mean? Do you ever leave the eye doctor more confused than when you went in there? Here, I'll explain what's really going on inside of your eye and how your corrective glasses or contacts address that. The first number you probably see on your prescription is SPH, or spherical. This describes the overall power of your lenses. If your SPH number is positive, you have positive or plus lenses that magnify images, making them bigger. While if your SPH number is negative, you have negative or minus lenses that minimize images, making them smaller. If light is coming in from far away, positive lenses, focus that light down to a point. While if you have negative lenses, it takes that light and spreads it out. You see the light rays moving away from each other. But why would you want to focus light down to a point or spread it out anyway? So first I'll show you how a proper eye should function. It takes in that light from very far away and focuses that light down onto the retina. So let's say this is how the lens of your eye is supposed to work forming a nice sharp image, you could be nearsighted, meaning that it forms the image sooner than it should. So by the time that light reaches your retina, it is spread out into this little bit of a blur. On the other hand, your eye could also be farsighted, meaning that the light is trying to focus after your retina. So once it hits there, it hasn't quite come to a point of focus yet. And so the lines are more spread out. In both cases, it makes your vision more blurry. If you're nearsighted, objects close to you will be in focus, while things further away will be blurry. But if you're farsighted, it's objects further away that will be in focus, while the objects close to you will be blurry. So if I'm farsighted, I need to move up that point of focus back onto the retina. So for a farsighted eye, your glasses or contacts are positive lenses. Putting a positive lens in front of the eye moves up that point of focus. Here, this lens is too powerful. It's moving the focus inside of the eye. Here, it's outside of the eye. And here, it's focusing inside of the eye. But if I had a slightly weaker positive lens, I could move that point of focus exactly where it should be onto the retina. On the other hand, if I'm nearsighted, I need to push back that point of focus onto the retina. So for a nearsighted eye, I take a negative lens and put it in front of the eye and this lens is way too powerful. You can see it basically canceled out that first lens, making the line straight again. But if I had a slightly weaker, actually much weaker negative lens, it could push back that point of focus right onto the retina. So now you understand the difference between positive and negative lenses, but what does the number itself for SPH mean? That describes the power of your lens in diopters. And basically, higher number, more powerful lens that's bending the light more. You probably don't understand what a diopter means though, right? To explain that, I'll explain something called the focal length of a lens. So again, if light comes in from far away, those positive lenses focus light down to a point. So the focal length is the distance from the lens to the point where it focuses that light down. And diopters is just one divided by the focal length. The power in diopters of a negative lens is also one divided by the focal length, but negative lenses are a little bit different because you can't measure to a specific point, they're spreading light out, the way to determine the focal length of a negative lens is you look at these lines that are spreading out and you just trace these lines backwards to an imaginary spot where they come to a point of focus somewhere in the middle. And then the distance from the lens to that imaginary spot is the focal length of a negative lens. First part of the prescription down. The second part is CYL or cylinder. This describes whether or not you have astigmatism. Astigmatism means that your eye isn't shaped symmetrically. It could be a little oblong, so it could be shaped more like a football instead of a sphere. Because of that, it focuses light differently in different perpendicular directions. This is why a lot of people see dots at night be spread into lines, such as traffic lights. An eye with astigmatism may focus light perfectly well in one direction, but because it has that asymmetric shape, in the perpendicular direction, it may be nearsighted or farsighted. So if I put a lens used to correct for astigmatism in front of these lasers, you'll see that as I rotate it, the angle at which that light is bent changes. Again, that's because this lens is designed to correct for different errors in different directions because of astigmatism. And even just looking at a lens that corrects for astigmatism, you can tell that the lens's thickness and curvature is different in perpendicular directions. The numbers for CYL are also in diopters, just like that spherical specification. So they describe the additional correction needed in those perpendicular directions. 
The third part of your prescription is super quick to explain. It's directly related to astigmatism. So the next part will be axis, which helps explain the orientation of your astigmatism. So axis will be a number going from one to 180. And so if it is 90, that means that the axis in which you don't have that cylindrical correction for stigmatism is vertical. While if it is 180, it means that that is horizontal, where you have that cylindrical correction. This helps you and your eye doctor know how to position your lenses. All the things I've talked about so far can also be corrected for using contact lenses, but contact lenses for astigmatism suck. They're rigid instead of soft and flexible because they have to be oriented a certain way because they're curved differently in different directions. So they're rigid and the bottom part of it will be a little bit heavier so that, that settles down to the bottom. So you have to put it in your eye and just blink and kind of wait in pain for it to settle to the right position. However, there are markings indicating the bottom of those contacts, so please put them in with those markings facing down to save yourself some pain. As I rotate a lens with a CYL specification, you see this different warping in different directions. The fourth part of your prescription starts getting a little weird. It's probably add or addition. So this describes the additional correction needed for viewing things up close, like reading glasses or progressive lenses. This specification is called addition because it's the additional power needed to magnify things up close and help you read. So if you have reading glasses, they're just normal flat pieces of glass for the most part, except for the very bottom, it has that additional power to help you see things up close. And then if you have bifocals, it's one kind of lens up top, and then you see a line where it transitions to having that stronger power on the bottom. But progressive lenses are weirder. They gradually transition between those different sections. So the top is for distance viewing, for things far away, and then it gradually shifts so that the middle is intermediate viewing, like maybe looking at a computer screen, and the bottom has more magnification for reading up close. So as I move to the bottom, you see the bottom of my face start to get a little bit bigger. That's because it's magnifying for reading. And so progressive lenses are great because they allow you to do a lot of different things well, but you have to look through the right part of the lens to do that. If you try and look through the top part of the lens for reading, it's not gonna work out so well. So as I move these lenses around, you see some weird distortion effects happening across them. So you kind of have to get used to these. So if I have a progressive lens in front of the lasers and I have it lined up properly, you can actually see this bottom laser is focusing sooner than the laser up top. That's because this bottom portion has that extra power for reading. The units for add are still diopters, so the higher that number, the more extra correction you have at the bottom. Prescription part number five. If you see a PRISM specification, that means that your lens is correct for a lazy eye, or double vision. Your two eyes are focusing to two different spots, so you need to realign those so that you're forming one image. The PRISM I have is pretty different from the PRISMs in your glasses, but they're both just blocks of glass or plastic. So, I can show you at least that this PRISM redirects the light. You see that it comes in, changes direction, and is now coming down below here, showing up on the board. So the prisms and glasses do something slightly similar, where they redirect the light from one of the eyes, so you again form one nice image. You may also see a value for PD, or a pupillary distance. It's quite simply the distance between your two pupils. I hope that helped you better understand what your prescription really means. Please comment down below to let me know what other eye-related topics you'd like me to talk about. Thanks.